So what exactly are stalactites and stalagmites? Well, let's take a look at this amazing cave right here. What you can see is many rock formations, rock concretions. So what happens is that the minerals carried through water actually filter through the sea and, you know, drop inside the cave, forming respectively on the ceiling some stalactites and on the ground some stalagmites. Now eventually, after millions and millions of years, the two of them might even connect into a huge column. Some of them can get pretty huge and feature some beautiful, intricate details. These are called great trees. Since we're going to do some scattered terrain, we're going to mainly focus on the stalagmites and the bigger columns. This was Nigel from the caves. Back to you, Long Vader. Let's get to the craft. You need cardstock, something a bit rigid but easy to cut, some barbecue skewers, some toothpicks, even if you won't need that much, quite a hefty amount of aluminum foil, some toilet paper. For convenience, I'm going to use both a small glue gun and a big one. Finally, we're going to need some white glue, PVA glue or Mod Podge, some very basic craft paints, and some brushes. So first I'm going to draw the layouts of the bases of my scattered terrain pieces. I've already got a few pieces of stalagmites, so I'm going for a small set this time. So I'm cutting all of them. Okay, as you can see, I'm going to use the barbecue skewer. And I'm going to use a miniature as scale reference. I'm going to glue the barbecue skewer onto the base and make sure it stands perpendicular to the ground. This is going to be the backbone of my column. And it's going to be a big one. And aluminum is pretty light, so what I'm going to do is weight down the column at its base. So I'm using the hot glue, and I'm actually only gluing a ring of aluminum foil at the base, leaving a space in the mill. I'm making sure the base is seamless, and I'm going to use sand to weight it down. There you go. When I'm done, I'm just sealing everything with hot glue. Then I'm just taking some more aluminum foil to make the rest of the column. So the advantage of aluminum foil is that it's pretty cheap, is very light and it's very easy to sculpt. And I'm gonna be able to press it some places to get a sculpt of basic shapes of the column. Now you could do this without using some aluminum foil. You could use TP with some, you know, white glue or something like that. But it would definitely take time to, to cure. So the aluminum foil is a good alternative if you want to speed up. Plus aluminum foil is pretty cheap by itself. So as you can see, I'm actually pressing on some spots. Because uh, the column isn't just a tube, you know. It's got, uh, it's got a very distinct shape. If you look closely at those columns, you can actually see they aren't symmetrical. The top section is pretty different from the lower one, uh, simply because it's actually a stalactite that has connected uh, with the stalagmites. And those two different kinds of concretions are pretty different. While the higher part of the column is going to be standard, pretty uh, smooth and pretty regular, the lower parts, especially for larger columns, are really gonna resemble a sort of pile of mushrooms. See, there are gonna be ledges um, every now and then. And from these ledges, you're actually gonna have some smaller uh, stalactites uh, coming down from these ledges, connecting to uh, the levels uh, below each time. So we're gonna try to mimic this uh, using the glue gun. Now to make the smaller stack dice, the draperies coming down from the different ledges, I suggest you use a smaller glue gun. So what you want to do is put a dab of glue, a drop of glue, and then just drag the drop, uh, continuing squeezing uh, just a little bit the trigger of the glue gun to get some glue all the way down and connect it to the ledge below. Now make sure you hold the column as vertical as you can, since hot glue tends to bend under gravity effect. You can also blow gently on the glue to make it set faster. Now by using the glue gun you're gonna end up with a substantial amount of wisps of glue on your craft. But you can use a lighter just to, you know, remove the wisps of glue under the heat. 
but be cautious because aluminum is actually a very good heat catalyst so even if you apply hot glue on one side of the craft by holding the aluminum it can get pretty hot so be cautious guys so now what i'm gonna do is use some white glue and what i'm gonna do is apply some toilet paper just to give texture also paint doesn't stick very well to aluminum foil but it will stick a lot better on hardened uh, toilet paper. As you can see here, I'm using it from the outside, using the white glue to tear up uh, the toilet paper and make sure it, uh, it really goes into recesses. If you want to get the same effect, but way easier, I would actually suggest doing this at an early stage, just after doing the ledges uh, with the hot glue, you know, just just apply the, um, the toilet paper then and add the, the white glue before uh, adding the rest of the, the draperies. Uh, it'll just it'll be faster and the result will be much neater. So either you can leave it to dry or if you can use a hair dryer if you want to get faster. Um, here I'm just demonstrating with one piece, but I would really suggest uh, drying many of them together. So obviously don't do one piece after another. Try to do them in bulk. It'll save up both materials and a lot of time. But uh, if you want to dry them up with a hair dryer, definitely consider putting the pieces inside a box of some kind preventing the heat of scattering into the space of the room and keeping it concentrated around the pieces in the box. You'll see it dries a lot faster this way. Now let's see how we can do some stalagmite formations. As you can see, I'm still using aluminum to form a base, an elongated base. Then I'm gonna use a barbecue skewer and punch some holes uh, in this aluminum. These are gonna be the spots where I'm gonna thread in uh, some, some barbecue skewers, cut at different heights, and later on some smaller toothpicks for smaller uh, stalagmites. Also using some aluminum foil for the bigger ones, just to give a little bit of bulk to them. I'm gonna be able to sculpt them a little bit. But most of the job is going to be done with some hot glue. The effect we want to give is that uh, minerals uh, have been carried dropping for you know millions of years. So we got to have the impression that you know um, there are layers. So the first layer we're going to start with is going to be the lower one. You know, go all around the piece uh, first. Then I'm going to wait just a few seconds for the the hot glue to 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 actually harden and then I'm gonna pass over uh, to make the the next step and it'll give hopefully it'll give this kind of you know mineral natural stair impression finally I'm gonna use the smaller glue gun to make the the texture directly onto the stalagmites I'm gonna be able to do some small ledges just as I did on the big column and some small draperies Time to prime. So I'm gonna use some basic white craft acrylic paints and mix it 50-50 ratio with some Mod Podge. Just to get a good base coat that will seal everything and on top of which paint can actually stick properly. So I'm making sure to have a good coverage and get in every recess. Now most caves and uh, stalactites and stalagmites are actually made out of limestone most of the time. You know, very bright. However, limestone isn't completely white. So first I'm gonna paint the pieces with salmon color. And then I'm gonna do a heavy dry brush with some white. And when I mean a heavy dry brush, it means it's a dry brush, but the brush is gonna be pretty heavily charged with paint. You wanna go for some pretty nice contrast here. It'll give a way more volume to your stalagmites and also it'll increase the aspect uh, that the stalagmites are actually shiny because they are, you know, wet. But of course, to increase this effect of wetness, we're also going to use some kind of sealant, some kind of uh, varnish, kind of glossy varnish to seal off the piece. And we're pretty much done. It's an easy craft. 
Now I'm pretty sure if you spend enough time you can sc actually sculpt something really nice and a lot better than what I did. I actually made these pieces pretty fast because I intend to use the pieces later on for our home game since my players are in caves right now. Nonetheless I think they look pretty damn cool and they were really easy to craft. So how about that? I actually released a tutorial. So if you guys don't want to miss out on any of my vids, don't forget to subscribe and actually smash the little bell icon if you don't get notifications. I know for a fact that many of you guys, most of you guys didn't see the last tutorial, which is a shame really. So, you know, subscribe and hit the bell icon. But before I go, I want to make a little shout out to one of our crafters here online on YouTube making tutorials. And uh, I'm talking about Frankie D Crafter. So if you haven't seen uh, his work, uh, go check it out. I'll be happy if I send some of you guys uh, back there. So if you guys are looking for another crafter displaying content here on YouTube with colorful and very unique style, then check out his channel. Very organic world with a colorful palette. He does some mean custom monsters. Heck, he even draws well. Anyway, go check out his stuff, because he sure deserves way more attention. Anyway, see you around, guys. On Vader signing off.